Hi, it's quick teardown time. I got one of the cheapest EVSEs or electric vehicle supply equipment uh, as they're known, which is basically a, what people call an EV uh, charger. I got one of the cheapest ones, if, if not the cheapest one you can get in this uh, country. And this one is actually a uh, 15 amp jobby. If you don't know your Aussie plugs, the larger 15 amp one as opposed to the 10 amp one, it's exactly the same as a regular uh, 10 amp Aussie uh, plug, except the earth pin is actually bigger on that and that's a 15 amp outlet they're not hugely uh, common this is actually can give me 15 amps of uh, charge at uh, 240 volts or up to you know whatever your main uh, supply voltage is here in Australia it's 230 volts plus minus uh, 10 percent so mine's typically uh, 200 around 240 to 245 volts are uh, here at the lab and at home and uh, this will uh, just allow me in a portable uh, scenario to actually charge uh, quicker if I've got a 15 amp outlet but anyway um, this one's about 150 Yankee bucks and it comes from a company called MIDA and it turns out that MIDA power are actually uh, like a quite a big maker it seems of uh, EV charging equipment and that's all they do they even make like faster CCS uh, DC chargers um, yeah they're you know it's not just kind of some company uh, slapping together um, an EV charger so I thought we'd do a quick teardown and uh, take a look at this and it is actually available in a up to a 16 amp uh, version but it depends on which country you're in this is the um, official Australian certified uh, one uh, meets you know all the Aussie uh, standards and everything so this is limited to uh, 15 amp here but you can actually select with the button on the front 6, 8, 10 uh, amps or 15 amp uh, charge current I don't know why you'd want to go lower but you know if you're sucking some uh, power from like solar and you need to power some other stuff or something yeah maybe Anyway, it does have the Type 2 plug on the other end and uh, the cable. What do we got here? Looks uh, like it's TUV uh, approved. 2.5mm uh, uh, square, which is what you'd want uh, for a 15 amps, plus the uh, 0.5 square millimeter uh, that'd be for the uh, control. 450, 750 volt. Um, Chengzhou Pingdo Electron Code. Anyway, it looks like and feels like a decent quality bit of kit especially for the money this is only 150 yankee bucks bare rock bottom price for an EVC charger anyway let's tear it down i think we've got some screws here let's check out the build quality so i've done a video on my uh, zappy charger and in that um i've demoed and explained how ev chargers work this is not a charger okay there's no active circuitry inside here that uh charges the car the charge is actually inside your electric car at least for the uh, AC charging for the really uh, high power uh, CCS uh, DC chargers no they charge directly into the battery pack and that's why they have to be hugely uh, complex and expensive things that you install at you know a service station but for AC chargers like this one and one's up to like seven kilowatts or whatever or it could be even uh, 22 kilowatts depending on whether it's a single or three uh, phase uh, my 2020 Ionic EV is only capable of single phase charging so it'll only do up to uh, seven kilowatts or so and that's what my zappy charger does at home but the AC chargers um, all, all that the EVSE here does even though we call it a charger box is all it does is actually switch through it's just got a big relay in there that switches through the AC and then it's got a little micro in there which just uh, sends out a PWM signal to the car to tell it what charge current is available and then the char and then the car will actually regulate that so right off the bat here oh I'm seeing metal threaded inserts that's very nice oh, oh geez that looks nice really liking the look of that look at those current transformers in there that's really neat just right off the bat Loving the crimped, um, and yeah, they got a shakeproof washer on the bottom of those. I love the interface on that. This is really good. It's got an o ring uh, seal around there for some weather uh, proofing, and that goes into the top board, which just has a uh, micro on the, That's There's just one button on the top, and the well, that'll be the LCD uh, driver. We'll power it up at the end of this, and I'll um, show you. But oh, what's going on? What's this over? Oh, that's just a lead, um, yeah, lead bar graph. It does like, you know, earth leakage uh, detection, and thermal overload protection and stuff like that. But basically it has um, a big relay switching in here and all it does is essentially if the conditions are right and it detects that it's plugged into the car and uh, it sends out a PWM signal 
to the car. The car will then uh, know which uh, what power levels is available. Then it, the car will only take that amount. But basically, all it does is switch um, the active and neutral. It'll be switching both uh, just through, and that's basically it. And the car will charge the uh, EV battery with uh, its own built-in charger. So this thing. It's just a very smart uh, relay with some, um, you know, safety features and some PWM stuff. But isn't that layout very, very nice? I'm impressed with that. We can easily get in there, measure stuff. It's repairable. That'd be the uh, PWM uh, control wire going over to the uh, car. It looks like it's got another Phoenix connector under there, but that's not going anywhere. So maybe there's another in interface model or something. Um, yeah, it looks very well clamped down here. I'm just liking the build quality of that. That looks absolutely first class. And you've got to remember, this is like bottom of the line pricing too. Like you can pay two to three times the price of this. Small touches here. They've just put some Celastic down for whatever that is on there. Oh, no, it's just a cap. I see it's labeled C. Yeah, then we've just got, is that a current transformer? Is that like a Hall effect? Uh, jobby in there, but uh, anyway, yeah, that'd be measuring that that looks like it's measuring the active So this relay here would be switching the active like that and that'd be the active going over there And then this relay here would be switching the neutral which is the blue one You know colors um, here here in Australia We have brown for active and blue for neutral and green for earth So that'd be measuring the uh, charge current and then this one here would be measuring uh, The imbalance between active and neutral so this would be like an earth leakage Circuit breaker type thing. Oh, I had that back to front. This is actually the output here and this is the input. I should flip it around. All right, so we've got mains input over here, okay? So basically, if the current flowing through the active like this out here into the right out here into the car and it doesn't come back, if it's out of balance with the current that flows through here, then you'll have a differential in the current between these two. They won't cancel out each other out anymore and it can detect the difference. That's probably that uh, circuitry down there and it can detect that's an earth leak. Leakage, um, circuit breaker. Well, it's basically a core balance um, relay thing and then that will trip and disconnect the whole thing as a uh, safety feature. So that's really nice. And what else we got in here? Well, up the top here, looks like this is just the mains uh, power supply, which, you know, so this would just be the mains coming in here again. We've got another, or maybe these Phoenix connectors are here for factory test because I don't know what their version of the product would use Phoenix connectors. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um, if you know, leave it in the comments. Or it wouldn't be too hard to do better nails when you've got the huge big uh, contacts like this. You could have, you know, a big lid with pins that come down and make contact with these. And then you could uh, test your boards at uh, the production factory uh, stage. But anyway, this would be an isolated uh, switch mode uh, supply for powering the uh, circuitry. A bunch of series resistors up there. So they're getting, they're putting those in series so that they can get a high voltage resistor in there to get the uh, voltage drop on that. As for the relays in here what do we got hf okay so the big question is are these japanese relays not japanese relays unfortunately uh these are hongfa uh, brand but they are uh, serious uh relays for this sort of application uh and also certified as well so these are actually 50 amp relays so um they might actually use this same board in uh, they might i think they make a 32 amp version of variant of this um it looks slightly different but you know maybe they use the same relays in that as well they certainly could and these are actually latching relays so they don't need coil power to uh keep them in the latched uh, state but i don't know why you'd use a latching relay for this sort of uh, thing. It's not like the uh, coil current consumption is an issue. And really, I would uh, prefer that, like, if it lost uh, power, I don't want it to be latched in a certain state. I'd rather see it, like, <laughs> like normally open, and then it has to require the active electronics to then keep it energized and switched on and the input is fused as you'd expect you can see that little smd jobby down there that's for the uh, main switch mode from the mains input uh, side nice anyway interestingly there is an ntc uh, thermistor temperature sensor input there i mean the micro has probably got a uh, temperature sensor in it as well because i can't imagine that it's not measuring the internal temperature in a sealed enclosure design like this. My guess would be that uh, given the proximity of this thing, they would actually have in the higher amp models, but not in this one, they would actually have a thermistor 
measuring the uh, temperature inside the mains uh, plug because when you start talking 32 amps, you start talking, you know, um, serious, like 15 amps is like, meh, like, you know, I, I wouldn't bother. That's why they haven't got it uh, fitted in here. But uh, yeah, it can become a problem. Um, you know, you get dodgy connections on your uh, mains input plug and that can overheat and that can <laughs> ruin your day. So yeah, uh, you would want to add a thermistor in there and then they would use um, a non-standard mains cable and they'd have like an extra uh, pair going up there to the thermistor and then that would just plug in there and there doesn't seem to be another input there for like any sort of you know moisture ingress uh, sensor because uh, like this is a portable one so you might use these like out in the rain back side of the board only a single sided load and uh, they've got some extra uh, current carrying capacity by uh, removing the solder mask and just leaving the uh, solder plate on there but um, yeah that's exactly what I expected nice spacing everything's hunky-dory nice solder joints on there too it's all looking pretty schmick all right, let's just go briefly through the PCB. Uh, down the bottom here, this is actually interesting. This is an ST Micro Jobby. So there's tons of like Asian alternatives, but they use an ST one, a Viper 27. Why can't all chips be given decent names like Viper 27? I love it. Instead of like LM12345, come on. Give me anyway, it's an offline uh, high voltage uh, converter here. So exactly what you expect. It's just an isolated offline converter, um, optocoupler, feedback that's in there somewhere but um yeah plain vanilla stuff i just a bit surprised that they used an st part there i didn't look at what brand caps they're using on the output here but yeah so you've got your mains input uh, here you've got your uh, common mode choke you've got some um x and y class uh, caps here by the look of it and the um just the offline uh converter and uh, there's your um secondary so i flipped to the back side of the board which is like you're looking through the board so i flipped it and oriented so we'll see like the output down here like this and if we flip over the, you can see that there it is there there's the secondary output there and you can see that that powers all the stuff along the top side here so that includes this chip we'll take a look at this one we'll take a look at and this one here this one obviously it's right near the pwm output here it uh, would control the relays as well can see a couple of uh back emf diodes in there can we um this one here is obviously to do with the current uh sense here the core balance uh relay like this and this one over here i thought was just like a driver going over to like the lc like a shift register or something but no it's not it's more interesting than that because this is the mains input here and you'll see that it's actually going off through these caps right so you've got a capacitive resistor divider thing happening here so what is this chip like i thought you know right near these pins i got fooled it's actually this thing it, we've got a high trend tech chipset here what it is is an energy monitoring chip i didn't expect an energy monitoring chip there you go 22 bit sigma delta adc i expected just basic current limiting you know is like limited to um, X amount of, of current like there's no need to measure the real power and apparent power but maybe it's just for like overload and it's I don't know, maybe it's cheap as chips ha, I'm here all week this one over here um, can measure the current that's doing the uh, current measurement so I don't know how that's getting back over to here like this ah there you go there's the uh, current transformer there or the Hall effect uh, sensor and that's going these traces going back over to there so it is actually measuring the current and the voltage so it can actually measure the real power consumption, real and apparent power consumption of this thing. Oh, so according to the manual, <laughs> comprehensive as it is, um, it seems to only have a voltage and current display. It doesn't have a power display, let alone a kilowatt hour, like an energy uh, display to tell you how much ac accumulated energy is put into your car and this one in here is exactly what you'd expect this is uh the chip that connects to the um hall effect current uh sensor thing here i don't know what it is um but that's an fm 2147 and all this circuitry will no doubt match the application note over here this is a food and microelectronics group company limited and this is a very specific uh, earth leakage monitoring chip it's designed for exactly this application here and uh, it's got a block diagram here but it's also got an application schematic i bet you 
this is going to be pretty darn close to the application circuit and now um, it's got the input specific input there for the uh, current transformer here just measures the imbalance I don't know what you set set it to like there's no adjustment thing in here maybe it's like you know fixed to some standard 30 milliamps 50 milliamps something like that current i don't know maybe you'd have to translate it from the voltage coming out i don't know anyway yeah that's a dedicated earth leakage um breaker chip as you'd expect and this up here i thought would have been the micro to drive this pin but it looks like it's an st um 2902 just a joe blogs um quad op amp Anyway, that makes sense because you've got a capacitor dropper. Well, you've got two capacitor droppers down here and then a high voltage series resistor. And there, the trace, you can see that going off over to here. So that's doing some sort of monitoring uh, for the car side over here. But anyway, the micro must be over on the main board. In the main board, as you can see over here, that is an STM32 uh, micro. So once again, a bit surprising that they didn't use some, you know, Asian, Asian sourced uh, micro in here. I guess they already had the uh, development experience for the ST uh, micro. And this uh, flat flex ribbon here is for the uh, switch, which is on the front panel there. And it's just got some LEDs there, which then connect through here. And, and Bob's your uncle. These dip switches here, I would uh, say that they set the model and region because they sell these into different countries. There's different standards. As I said, this thing, this actual model is capable of 16 amps, but they limit it to 15 amps here in Australia. Don't have a 15 amp outlet in the lab, or I did, although <laughs> somebody took it out when they uh, I rented this place out and they renovated. But there it is. Oh no, it does have kilowatt display there. The oh, it does have kilowatt hour. There you go. Didn't have that in the manual. 24 degrees. So yep, it's got an internal uh, temperature sensor, as I suspected. Um, it doesn't know the Earth is uh, missing because it's got no way to <laughs> detect that. I don't actually have the Earth connected. Please excuse the crudity of the model. Didn't have time to build the scale or to paint it. Put a uh, 2.7K um, from the Earth through a uh, series diode through to the uh, control pilot pin here. And then uh, that will determine that it is connected is it connected? Yes, it is. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. But it's not actually starting the uh, charge current yet. To do that, we have to put the car, actually, this is normally, or this stuff's normally inside the car. To do that, to make it uh, switch through, we have to put a 1.2K in parallel with it. Boom, I heard a relay switch and it's charging. There you go. No worries. It's, well, it's not charging. It's switched the AC through. Works. And I want to see what happens if I imbalance the uh, thing with the diode here. Will it disconnect? No. No, it's still it's still charging. So it doesn't need the diode. It looks like it's not doing the, um, the imbalance diode protection thing. Okay, so I've got the diode shorted. And no, it's still, no, it ignores the diode. So I, I don't know if that's a specific standard. I don't know. You'd have to go into it, but it looks like it doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter whether the diode's there or not. Some charges do apparently. Anyway, it seems to do the business and uh, meets the basic uh, requirement there. You could get a resistor divider box out now. Nah, I won't bother. By the way, when you switch it off, it doesn't seem to unlatch those uh, relays when it loses power, but it switches uh, the relay back off as soon as you immediately apply power. So yeah. Not a problem, I guess. This was supposed to be a teardown video, so you'll leave it at that. And uh, I don't know, you might see an operational thing of this on my uh, EV one day. But actually, I'm very uh, impressed with this. And look, we can just change that. Can we? Yep, yep. Six amps through to 15 amps. And that's it. But I'm very impressed for the price point. I, like, expected this to just be slapped together and shoddy quality. And I'm impressed by the uh, quality of the case, too. Just the real thick um, ABS uh, construction. You saw, like, the ribs inside and everything. It's supposed to be IP67 rated. Um, it looks, its weather rating looks really good. Uh, but IP67 is supposed to survive, like, a one meter water immersion for up to 30 minutes. I don't know if you'd whack this in under one meter of water for 30 minutes but you know it's at least ip66 maybe in theory ip67 i don't know how they done the ceiling around the uh screen and stuff like that but the end but the o-ring ceiling here and the ends and everything looks uh hunky dory so as far as weather resistance and ruggedness goes wow it's unbelievable for the price and the quality of the uh design and construction of this thing i was quite impressed and this is like a bottom of the price unit there's no need to pay more um, then, you know, this, what was 150 US dollars? So if you're after an additional EV or CV car, usually they're included when you get an uh, EV, but you might need a uh, second or a third one or something or a replacement one. And um, 
yeah, there's no need to spend more than this. I'm quite impressed with this uh, MITRE uh, brand. It's pretty darn good. So, yeah, I just didn't expect that for the price. Anyway, thoughts and comments are down below. We'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.